NSA doesn't seem to want to explain or elaborate on the details of why this happens so frequently that they appear to be searching on the wrong names or searching on U.S. persons improperly. Charles, the, the NSA and the White House have said these were all unintentional. But where the intent seems to have happened here was the NSA took a look a lot at a lot of these violations and said, you know, we're supposed to report these to the appropriate authorities, the Federal uh, International Surveillance Court, but let's not tell them about this. I agree. That is where the, the problem really lies. It is with oversight. It is with reporting. It's good that they investigated themselves. It's not good that the story was kept inside and kind of glossed over so people wouldn't know. I think that's obviously where we have to go. Look, I think it's probably true that the overwhelming number of these instances was inadvertent. You enter in the wrong number. If you're doing trillions of searches every every year, you're going to have thousands of errors. But they have to be looked at. you got to make sure that they are inadvertent and none of this is deliberate. And the last point is what Kirsten is talking about. Snowden is obviously sitting on a ton of other stuff. We've mm. only seen, you know, the 10 percent, the iceberg here. So knowing that he's got all this stuff, why don't they come out right now and tell us everything that we know Snowden has and start for, with a clean slate? The fact that they are doing this in a drip, drip, a drip way can only hurt the credibility of the NSA and the administration. I hope there are no climate change deniers in the Department of the Interior. Uh, if you don't believe in it, come out into the resources, go on to some BLM land, go up to Alaska where the uh, permafrost is melting, go into the Sierra, which used to retain a lot more water in its frozen form. She said, I hope there are no climate deniers in the Department of the Interior, which is leading some people to think that dissenting opinions are not welcome here at the department. I don't think they are. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the Obama administration is very clear. I'm in the same camp with them that the science points in the direction of, uh, cl you know, all sorts of issues in terms of climate change. And I think that she was being very straightforward that they probably aren't going to entertain um, alter alternative viewpoints. Um, and I, I don't know why anybody would be surprised by that, frankly. I mean, is this getting into the realm of thought police, Charles? No, it's not totalitarian, but it is shockingly arrogant and anti-scientific. The idea that science is closed, that uh, science is settled, uh, and that anybody who brings evidence or questions it is somehow a flat earther is appalling. Freeman Dyson is one of the great physicists of our time. He's a climate skeptic. He has the more IQ in his pinky than the entire political echelon of the EPA put together. A and they are saying that, that this man is a scientific illiterate, the entire idea of science is that you are open to contrary evidence. It's the definition of a scientific theory. And particularly in climate science, which is young, it's new, it's built on all kinds of assumptions and data which uh, contradicts each other. The idea that it's a closed issue is in incredibly unscientific and arrogant and that, that, that these bureaucrats and political hacks are decreeing this, I think, is scandalous. Here's the lady who took the fifth and wouldn't answer Congress's question, wouldn't answer to the American people. And now we learn she's conducting official business on a personal account, in essence, p potentially hiding it from the taxpayers, hiding it from the American people. I think that the Congress is completely within their rights to demand. I mean, they have demanded those emails. They should subpoena them and see if there is anything in there that is that is of a uh, official nature. Charles, do you think this is an attempt to do business off the radar screen? Well, you, you can't be for sure, but given the fact she's never given any reason that she ought to be trusted, and she took the fifth, which I guess is legal, but it does imply something. Uh, we, why should we believe that this is entirely innocent? Of course we should have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Winners and losers, you're the, up 30 the seconds. The winner is the Olin Guido, which is not an, a northern Italian delicacy. It's a mammal discovered in the Andes, which is described as a teddy bear face with a, the body of a raccoon. This it's, is just a, a, pl a It is the new, don't the interrupt him, he's got 10 seconds. For the <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the new cute pandas or so yesterday. And the loser, <laughs> the loser is the, the zoo in China, which dressed up a dog as a lion. <laughs> oh discovered God. when Sherlock said, I heard that lion bark.
have been a Sunfish production.